we are about to finish the show, but it is also that time when we have to have a glimpse of the fan zone and everything that is happening around the world. It's a week and a time of the transfers, and one transfer that has shocked the world has got to be the Barcelona and the Lionel Messi saga. We haven't seen the last of this because the negotiations are still on, but we have got to talk about it. And joining me on the fan zone to discuss everything about everything that is happening in the world of football is none other than Samuel Mwanawanjuguna. It's been a long time, man. You have not been around here. Corona, Corona. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nowadays, eh? if, if anything happens, you just blame it on Corona, you know? Yes. Yeah, <laughs> if <laughs> people don't see you for so long, Corona. <laughs> corona. <you know>? So, <laughs> yeah. It, but, but on a serious note, yeah. um, uh, I think it's 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 it is, it is a wise decision yes. to stay away a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, also focus on yourself you and, know, and revisit go, some few things. People, the, there's one industry where, when you get away from the limelight and stay, you create more of a value. Uh, the arts <laughs> industry, <laughs> the, the, the Leonardo da Vinci. Yeah. Yeah. If we get Salvatore Mundi uh -huh. off. The charts are no one sees Ho it. Hopefully, for people missed me. You know, I'm just hoping people missed me. <laughs> okay, but now, but now, now we're back. Eh? Yeah, and then the big one, Lionel <laughs> Messi, Barcelona. This, this has been messy from the first uh, from the first day, yes. and I think it has been long coming. Mm -hmm. um, we remember Roma, yes, Liverpool, mm -hmm. and now Lisbon. Mm -hmm. Messi gave an interview to Gold.com, mm -hmm. um, and I think it's yesterday. Yeah. And he said he the decision has been made; it's final. He's staying at Barcelona. At mm -hmm. least we know that this season he's going to be at Barcelona. I think for La Liga, they didn't want him to leave because they lost Cristiano Ronaldo, yes. a marketing value. Now, if they lost Messi, if they lost Messi, the, the marketing value of La Liga depreciates. That that, that is where uh, I just want to jump in there because we have brought in La Liga. La Liga is the one that now blew this thing. All over. Because so they that, said, that, the, the clause of 700 million pounds. Yeah, you have to pay pounds, that right? price clause because it, they know yeah. the value of Lionel Messi to the league. It's not just, it was not just about, I, I think, the contractual ag agreement. Because yes. Messi, in that, in, in that interview with Goal, mm -hmm. he did insist that mm -hmm. um, for him, th he was in talks with the president. And the president had assured him, if the season is over and you want to go, you're mm -hmm. free to go. Mm -hmm. Now, this season has been a different season because... Normally, the season would have ended in June 10th. Yes. Now, the season has ended in August. Mm -hmm. So, he's like, for me, I know the season ended in August. Mm -hmm. But now, Barcelona are like, we're not going to let Messi go for free. Even if we, are to get some, we, we must get something. And not just that. Because you're looking at Barcelona that does not have star players anymore. Yes. It's not the Barcelona that had uh, the, the likes of Ronaldinho mm -hmm. anymore. So yes. you need at least something that can glue up and at least you have other players come around mm -hmm. and build around. Yes. So for me, I, I was looking at all this and saying, Messi is tired. Yes, yes he is. But for Barcelona, yes. they cannot afford to lose Messi yes. because they lose the, the cash that comes with him being in the club. Yes. And not just that, they lose the ability to compete with the likes of Real Madrid that yes. is rebuilding. Uh, it can it also be a lesson to Barcelona? Because I was talking to a Ugandan friend of mine, who's a fan of Barcelona from a very way, way back in the day. And he told me that Barcelona has a problem with their stars living. They usually create a very bad environment for them. They usually <laughs> don't let them live amicably. More so, remember the case of Luis Figo? Yeah. He left for Real Madrid. It was a very tedious... But again, that is to a yeah. next-door rival. Yeah. And I look at uh, Maradona living for Napoli. It's also the same. Rivaldo, this Ronaldinho... Is a, this is the thing. This is the thing. But, yeah. but, but many people have questioned Messi as a person mm -hmm. with all this. Because yes. Messi has said so many times in his career that he wants to end his career at Barcelona. Barcelona yes. So in, in, that, in all that, Messi in that interview, he said, mm -hmm. I did not want this to go to court. Mm -hmm. That's why I've, I've agreed to stay at Barcelona. Yes. But for me, if you look at it now, it's a test for him to mm -hmm. be professional. Because yes. now he has to sit and he has to play mm -hmm. in, a in a dressing room. He mm -hmm. said himself yes. that he had felt so toxic through, mm -hmm. during the season mm -hmm. and he felt like quitting so many times yes so in this dressing room he has to play this season yes. and not just that this club is going to he going to have this club on his shoulders yeah. again this season because there is no significant signing coming yes. in mm -hmm. and even if they make that signing of Gini Wijnaldum that mm -hmm. they want he's not going to solve all their problems yes. and they cannot solve all problems by having Ronald Koeman come in yeah. so again it's going to be back to him mm -hmm. can he be able to lead 
like a captain mm -hmm. and not just that can he be able to put aside the ma all this drama that has happened around this transfer saga mm -hmm. and carry this club to the end of the season that that is going to be a test for him as a person but also and also getting that captain and say back now because it, now is the they cannot take it away job. from him i don't yeah. think they can take it away from him uh -huh. they actually the club said he's not going to find him for missing the corona test and yes. also training for three days he mm -hmm. didn't go for training for three days the club said he's not going to find him for that yes I also wanted to point out in that interview there is something that is so significant. Mm -hmm. Messi said when he mentioned it to his family that he yes. wants to leave mm -hmm. Barcelona, mm -hmm. the son Tiago yes. cried. Uh -huh. And the wife mm -hmm. was also she That's did, their you know, home. You know, that has and, been and, their and, home. and he, he put it as traumatic uh -huh. drama. Yes. Those are keywords. And yeah. I feel for me, for him, as much as the decision to stay is not easy. Yeah because of his family, yeah. he's forced to. Mm -hmm. And even if he's to revisit it uh, yes. next, uh, in, in next summer, yeah. he will have to have prepared his family for it. Now, Messi is 33 years old, but how good could it have been for Messi to be in England? The, the, the rights of, uh, whether it's Manchester City mm -hmm. or which, whatever, whatever Just, club he goes. Yeah. And of course, mm -hmm. everybody thinks the Premier League is the best, uh, yeah. is, is the best product of mm -hmm. football. Mm -hmm. And if it is, having Lionel Messi there, mm -hmm. First of all, people derate Messi because of having not played in any other league other, yes. than, uh, other than La Liga. And not just that, having not played with any other club other than Barcelona, yeah. which makes Ronaldo come ahead for many people. Mm -hmm. But for me, I feel that would have been a new challenge for him. Mm -hmm. And how he copes with it, mm -hmm. going to England, the weather, yeah. for one, mm -hmm. to the physicality of the game. Mm -hmm. And then again, how do other clubs mm -hmm. adapt to playing with Messi yeah. or against Messi again yeah. becomes a whole different uh, yeah. story. Because it's now in, it's no longer about meeting in the Champions League for two games. Mm -hmm. You're going to meet with him regularly. Yeah. How do you adapt? How I, does I, Sheffield I, how does Sheffield defend against Messi? I, 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 I would love to see that, by uh, the way. Uh, Robertson is uh, the Liverpool left back. Yeah. The one who came out clearly and said, no, 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 for me, I don't want Messi in England. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, know. I mean, it's, 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 it's challenging. Yeah. Yeah. It's challenging. But but again, uh, as much as he's old, yeah. I think right now he's playing at his 95% of his best, yes. you know. And for the next, that's why for him he says the next three years are very decisive for him. Yeah. Because it's it's where you now at 36 you'll probably be thinking about retiring or yeah. going to a league whereby he is he, he's not having to do much. Because yeah. in the English Premier League, mm -hmm. the questions were if he goes to Manchester City, its midfield is not adapted. Right now does not have many players who can defend very well. Mm -hmm. Fernandinho has been forced to play in defence many times this yeah. season. Uh, he's also old. Uh, Rodri has not settled in. Mm -hmm. You cannot ask Gondogan to do the job. So if Messi does play in that team, where does he play? Yeah. Does he play as a number 10? Does he play as a right winger? And d does he have to track back if, he, mm -hmm. if he's playing in the wing? So again, so many questions in around that issue. Well, it's a story that will never come to an end because it's, we have got it. We have got to talk about it. The transfers are happening in and out and before the season kicks off in late September, actually with one big game being Liverpool versus Leeds United being one of the first matches of the league as Leeds has come back to the league for the first time I think since 2005 and they're back in the league with Marcelo Biesla, the former Argentinian coach and uh, some of the major transfers that have happened there's a link also of Luis Suarez having signed with Juventus, Juventus. and is going to link with his rival Cristiano Ronaldo is it a bit too late for Juventus to get such kind of a player? You can say it's too late, but mm. the questions are Cristiano mm. Ronaldo is 34, yeah. you've got um, Suarez who is 33, you've got Higuain still in that team who is also yeah. that in his 30s. Mm -hmm. How does that forward line mm -hmm. adapt to a league that is also very physical? Mm -hmm. You cannot, you cannot uh, ask those players to run all season, so oh, it's, it's going to be a bit... Tricky. But, but they're, they're bringing back um, the, the young player who was in Everton, his name is, is, is escaping my mind. Mm -hmm. They're bringing him, Keen, Musa Keen. Yeah, Musa Keen, yeah okay. they're bringing him back, mm -hmm. which is may be positive, but he, he now has to adapt to playing along, alongside Cristiano Ronaldo and Luis Suarez. Yes. And then uh, the, there was also one key transfer. Chelsea have really signed and uh, <laughs> they managed to get Kai Havertz. It uh, was oh, oh. challenging for them, but they finally got their player. I, I mean, Kai Havertz wanted to come to Chelsea. Yeah. He desperately wanted to go to Chelsea, mm -hmm. which is a good signing for them. Yeah. But for me, uh, for, for Chelsea, the signings they have made, mm -hmm. people should remember that Chelsea uh, sold Eden Hazard and never used that money because they had a transfer uh -huh. ban on, yes. on them. So yeah. for them spending this season, they're compensating for the two seasons that they haven't been able to sign players. Mm -hmm. And now you look at the forward line of Chelsea and clubs should get worried because you have got Kai Havertz, mm -hmm. you have got Christian Pulisic in that team, you have got Timo Werner in that team. So even if 
if you lose Willian, it doesn't really count because you have yeah. players who uh, who can play in small pockets of space, uh, small pockets of space, yeah. and you have got players that are very creative. Yeah. And this uh, the, and that, those are the kind of things they will be doing this season. Yeah. There's been a question about goals last season. Mm -hmm. Now they have goals in Timo Werner. He's got over 23 goals in yes. in, in the Bundesliga. So mm -hmm. you have got a player who is already proven. Mm -hmm. It may take them time to adapt to the English Premier League. Yeah. But again, Frank Lampard now has a machine that can be able to challenge Liverpool mm -hmm. and close that 43. Uh, points gap between them and Liverpool last season. Well, it's a big one for them there that they have gone and then uh, Rakitic leaving Barcelona to back to his former club Sevilla also. <sighs> This has been long coming, you know, yeah. for Barcelona to, to send out some of the old guard, yeah. like Sergio Busquets, the, those players, should, it's, not, it's no longer their time at Barcelona. Yeah. Uh, the likes of Ivan Rakitic, Luis Suarez, um, Vidal should also be at the exit door. Uh, yeah. For me, I feel as if now it's the time for them, for Ronald Koeman to recreate Barcelona. Yes. Um, um, this week, there were reports that, um, uh, of course, uh, led by some of the <laughs> leading analysts, uh, talking about how Barcelona has not changed yeah. when clubs like Real Madrid and the game itself mm -hmm. has changed. Because right now, you're talking about not just about pressing, mm -hmm. but also being able to press from the f uh, from the front mm -hmm. and defend well at the back. Yes. You've got centre-backs like Virgil van Dijk who can run all day and yes. tackle even if he's left alone. Mm -hmm. Right now, you look at Barcelona, they're depending on Gerard Piquet to do that. Longlet doesn't have pace, he's always beaten. His so again, they, they haven't really changed change their system yes. to adopt the modern game. Mm -hmm. Wow, it's a big one. The Manchester United, their first uh, signing, Donny van Beek from Ajax. Good signing. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good it's a good signing. Every <laughs> every uh, I, I was uh, looking at the, the interviews and former Manchester United players are happy with this signing. They are saying now this is the real Manchester transfer policy. You don't go for big name players, you don't go for a lot of cash money players. You just go for Average players, 40, 40 million pounds for him, 40 million pounds for, for, for around 40 million pounds for Fernandez. Yes. Again, th those are two players that you would see playing in that team. Yes. Questions have been where does he play? Does he mm -hmm. play as a right winger? Does he play in the midfield? Yes. But for a good player, for mm -hmm. me, I feel if you look at the transfer policy that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has brought at Manchester United, yeah. let's look at let's go roll back and see. One Bissaka came in to replace Antonio Valencia, whom yeah. they shipped out. They bought Maguire to replace Chris Smalling, whom they shipped out to on loan to Roma. He brought in Daniel James to play in the right wing. Who, it hasn't worked yet. Uh, Daniel James is still young also. Yes. Now for Danny Van de Beek, I, I feel as if it's it's a, a good player who can play in terms of when Pogba is injured or Bruno Fernandes is not available. Yes. He's, he's a good player and he can also play with them in terms when you play when you have bulk of possession at Old Trafford. So yes. again, it works for them either way. Wow. Big one there on those trucks. Koulibaly has been allowed to leave now. The Napoli president actually came out yesterday in the morning and said that if you can pay the release clause, which is uh, upwards of 90 million, he can leave. Manchester Napoli. City really want him. Yeah. Um, I, I think for Manchester City last season, they were very, very poor defensively. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether he, he suits Manchester City mm -hmm. in terms of how they play. Yeah. He is a good centre back, yes. Again, his age is an issue because yeah. if you look at the transfer policy at uh, Manchester City and even most clubs that have been linked with him, including Manchester United, yes. they're going for younger players, players around 23, 24. Yeah. So he is 29. He is at twilight of his career. So yes. I, I really don't see where he fits. But if, if they can be able to get him, he yeah. will improve them. And of course, they can be able to challenge for the title this season if they have the likes of Kali Dukulibali playing alongside uh, Laporte in that defence. It's yes. going to solve a lot of their problems. Well, big one. That's uh, actually much we can say about the transfers uh, because that's what is happening at the moment with the many transfers happening all over the world. We've also got many here in Kenya. We'll be doing a roundup of them in the next show to tell you everything has at least been going on. But here on the touchline, Robert Osoro, Samuel Mwano and Juguna, it's time also we give a bit of a talk on what is happening in the UEFA Nations League. It kicked off yesterday. Big match there being Germany and Spain, <laughs> and uh, Spain getting a late draw there against Germany. I think in the 96th minute that they got that draw. But the question will be can Portugal retain the trophy? It's possible. 
<laughs> but also you have to look at teams like Spain and also Germany. Yeah. Germany has a lot of new blood. Mm -hmm. If you look at Spain, the same. Yes. And also um, if you look at the likes of Croatia right now, and yeah. England is one team that people should look at very, very keenly. Yeah. The talent in those teams is immense. Mm -hmm. uh, the question now has to be, can they gel um, and be able to, of, of course, this is about moments and can they be able to recreate a moment for themselves? Mm -hmm. But for Portugal, I think they still retain most or majority of the players were there um, in, the, in the previous UEFA Nations League. Mm -hmm. So for them, it may be a smooth sailing, but they have to get past Croatia this evening mm -hmm. for them to be able to uh, at least advance into the next uh, stages. Well, big matches that are coming your way today. We've got Iceland going against England, Denmark versus Belgium. Portugal will be playing Croatia and then Sweden will be playing France today at uh, quarter past nine. Big matches that will be coming your way. Let's look at the England squad. They've had problems with Harry Maguire, but it seems to be a calm and collected squad. Got to the World Cup semi-finals under Gareth Southgate. Now they're in the UEFA Nations League. They are also, I think, in the semi-finals, but they could not get through, and they are playing Iceland. Good team to go against. It's a good team to challenge, mm -hmm. but again, the, I've, I've said this, the, the talent in England is immense. Mm -hmm. now that falls now to Gary Southgate, how he manages the team. Because yeah. if you look at the, the amount of talent up front mainly, mm -hmm. the problem mainly will be in the midfield, yes. uh, because they do not have players that I wouldn't say very creative, but in terms of doing the work in the midfield, um, the, the way you would say somebody uh, like uh, Henderson has done for Liverpool, he's yes. the only player who does that for England. Mm -hmm. They do not have a, a post cause like player. So for them, they will have to depend mainly on the forward line that has the likes of Jordan Sancho. Mm -hmm. You've got the likes of Harry Kane. You've got the, the young blood in Mason Greenwood. Yes. You've got Raheem Sterling and, and the likes in front. And the back line right now looks very good and solid. Mm -hmm. um, and in, they have got a young goalkeeper who is a Manchester United man, Dean yeah. Henderson, mm -hmm. who also can challenge Gerard, uh, Jordan Pickford for that a number one shot at uh, the England uh, team. And he is coming for it or not? Uh, he, he is. He <laughs> definitely <laughs> and, yeah. and for sure, if he starts, I don't, feel, I don't think many people will be having questions because yes. he's been absolutely fantastic this season. Yeah. He has done so well for Sheffield. Yeah. Uh, there, there is no question about his talent and his dedication. Yeah. He has already told Ole Gunnar Solskjaer that he's willing to dislodge David De Gea uh, as, as a Manchester United goalkeeper. So yeah. he's passionate, he's ambitious, and that's everything you're looking at, a goalkeeper. And yeah. he speaks a lot. Mm -hmm. He marshals the defence, yeah. which is something that... Um, very few goalkeepers have yeah. so again that's that's an advantage for him biggest match of the night has got to be sweden france yes uh, what do you make of that france you win the world cup but the uefa nations league you don't do it you're Can't. wearing a france jersey you know <laughs> <laughs> you're to betray yourself <laughs> yeah, i'm just being objective we, yeah we won the world cup but now how come we do not win this uefa nations league I feel as if for for France sometimes yeah. there are there are games where they they just the big players also sometimes disappear, yeah. but the, the talent is definitely there. Mm -hmm. Sweden will be a tough team to break down. They will mm -hmm. sit in deep. They will rely on counter attacks. Yes. They've got um, they, they play as a unit. For France right now, they have to use the individual brilliance yeah. in the likes of Paul Pogba and mm -hmm. the likes uh, and um, the likes of Kylian Mbappe. I don't think Griezmann will be playing uh, in this game. Pogba will not be there because of COVID. Yeah, and also and also Griezmann is. Yes. I don't think he has been a flinch player at Barcelona. Mm -hmm. So it, it's not. Uh, and the likes of Martial have been performing very well. So I yes. think they will be given a preference. Yeah. And and Lamar will be playing in that game. So probably it will Actually, be Martial got his call up to the squad alongside yeah. Rabiot. Yeah. So they got they got a chance. Th that to was a strange one for Rabiot. That yeah. was a strange one. I didn't expect <laughs> no, him in yes. that team because yeah. again you've got you've got the likes of Ngolo Kante. You've got mm -hmm. the Verratis of this world. So I, I didn't expect him. Oh, Verat is in Italy, actually. Yes. Uh, so I, did, I didn't expect Rabiot to be called because mm. actually he hasn't played that much yes. at Juventus, mm -hmm. which he was also regretting going there af yeah. after being sought out by the likes of Liverpool last, uh, before joining Juventus. Yeah. And then finally, we've got Portugal, Croatia. So that, that, that was big, what I was looking at. That, that, that is a big match. <laughs> that, that is a big it, match that, of that, the day. That, that's the biggest match for me, I feel. Because yeah. Portugal is playing very well. Croatia is also, uh, you know, the, the heroics of uh, reaching the uh, World Cup final. Of course, they lost it. But again, the way they play yeah. and the likes of Rebic has been very phenomenal this season. Yes. So he's a player to look up to. And it's Ronaldo going to be, might miss the yeah. toe injury. Yeah, but again, it's going to be an end-to-end -end game. It's going to be an entertaining. Wow. That's where we come to the end of the touchline here on Y254. It has been a 
good two hours we have enjoyed here. We started with Ngarwa, Kamuya and Wanjoy Gitia talking about sports management, consultancy, their young firm. Let's see what is going to do in this town and Kenya for the future. We have been discussing with Samuel Mwano and Juguna, sports journalist here, and we have been talking about the fans and everything that has been happening in the world of sport. I'm Robert Osoro. On behalf of the Touchline crew, we say good afternoon. Enjoy the rest of your evening and enjoy Y254.